Hey everyone, Sarah Picaro. Today's video, we are going to dive into enmeshment and what that means. Um, particularly with women, this also applies if you're a man. Uh, we're going to be looking at mother daughter enmeshment today, but this really is parent child enmeshment. So please take note of that. Use these words interchangeably. Um, but mother daughter enmeshment, or you know, father son enmeshment, or even mother son or father daughter, all kinds of different combinations for enmeshment. So, as we take a look at that today, what it means and the impact that it has on the child later on in their life when they become an adult. So, parent child, or just for the sake of this video, mother daughter enmeshment is when a mother treats her daughter as her best friend or as her therapist. And remember all the different scenarios, right? This can be father, son, this can be mother, son, and, and all of those combinations. When a parent treats their child as a best friend or their therapist, and they just dump everything onto them, they dump all of these adult problems onto this child and right? Why do people go to therapy? Well, because they have a problem and they want a solution. They want to not have that problem. They want to resolve it and then go to someone for help or support. But when a parent uses a child for that or treats them as a best friend, right? Generally, when you have a best friend, you're really nice to them, right? And you're supportive and you're encouraging and you're motivating. But when a parent does that to a child, it's not without repercussions. So we're going to dive into those a little bit later. But a parent or a mother who frequently invades their child or their daughter's privacy, boundaries, steps over them through body shaming or judgments about their body, obviously has detrimental impact. I've worked with so many women in particular, men do too, but I've worked with women who have severe issues with their body, with the way that their body looks, with the way that they feel about their body, because they had mothers who were always criticizing them, who were saying that they weren't skinny enough, that they, they didn't wear their hair a particular way, or they didn't dress a certain way. So this particular mother-daughter enmeshment is when a mother frequently invades their daughter's privacy and boundaries through shaming about their body or judgments about their body. And, you know, makes reference to the type of food they eat or how much of that food that they eat. That stays with the child throughout their life, obviously until they become an adult and have their own therapy work around it. But that's, that's another form of mother-daughter enmeshment. Another form as well is a mother who uses manipulation or guilt to maintain particular appearances because if the daughter looks a certain way or is involved in certain activities, then it can make the mother look good. So yes, this can be a very narcissistic trait. The mother who uses manipulation and guilt, which is otherwise known as gaslighting, uh, to maintain appearances. So they will make certain comments, sometimes very underhanded, sometimes very covert comments and guilt them. You're really gonna eat that, all of it? To get the daughter, the child to question themselves and, and, and pull this guilt and the shame in, well, yeah, I mean, I was going to, I'm hungry, okay. To guilt and shame them to maintain certain appearances. So perhaps if that daughter or that child has a certain appearance and the child goes out, the daughter goes out with the mother and, and you know, out into, you know, even the community or to certain particular places where the mother will be seen with that daughter and that daughter looks, acts, or dresses a certain way, then the mother receives praise of like, oh my God, your daughter, she's so accomplished, look at her. Uh, and and it, it builds up the mother. So that is another example of it. Another way that this presents or shows up is when a mother emotionally monopolizes and to monopolize, right, is to have all of it, the daughter's time and energy. 
So maybe she doesn't let her go out with friends. Maybe she's constantly coming into her room, um, checking into her social media or, or invading her privacy and going, oh, so I saw that so-and-so commented and so-and-so liked. It's as if the daughter can't do anything without the mother getting involved or knowing about it or having a particular comment about it where the daughter or the child has no space or no privacy of their own. The mother does this. The mother will monopolize the child or the daughter's own time and energy. Then there's all kinds of energy, right? But especially the emotional energy. So they feel very draining and exhausting for the child or the daughter in this case with this type of mother. And the mother is doing this to avoid her own pain. There are things that she has not yet worked through or processed that are not the daughter's responsibility, but the mother will put it on the daughter as if it is. All to avoid her own pain. So the mother is trying to avoid her own pain. It's a protective mechanism, a coping mechanism, and using her daughter to do just such. And when a daughter has experienced enmeshment with her mother, uh, depending on when it began, and particularly, it, it always kind of begins early on uh, with mothers with these types of personalities, then it just becomes what it is, right? And you grow up in this. And even if you grow up in a toxic, unhealthy, abusive environment, where, you know, whether it's physically or emotionally abusive, you don't know that something's wrong. You may have that feeling and that inkling, that in inclination and that inner knowing that something is off. You don't know that when you're a child, because you don't know that there are different ways of being out there because you are being raised by this mother. But what it can lead to in adulthood is really detrimental. It can lead to the daughter neglecting herself in all areas, in all ways, mentally, emotionally, physically, leading to feelings that she's unworthy, unlovable, not good enough. It can lead to feeling exploited like exposed, your mother just put it all out there and you had no secrets, no privacy, which can lead to you feeling resentful or the daughter feeling resentful towards her mother, hating her mother, having feelings of envy, rage, and just complete uh, disregard to her mother. And, and the child, the daughter can hold on to those feelings of anger tension, frustration. And when you're holding on to things like that, it becomes difficult to experience other feelings, happiness, joy, peace, contentment, love, acceptance. Uh, it can often lead to the daughter ending up in emotionally unavailable romantic relationships or friendships, all because the mother was emotionally unavailable and emotionally dumped all of her problems on her child or her daughter and said, oh my gosh, fix this, work this out for me. I can't handle this. Again, it can lead to the child growing up, feeling and adopting those same beliefs. I can't handle this. I can't do this. And then that child, that daughter, putting all of their problems onto someone else and expecting someone else to fix it for them the same way that their mother expected the child or the daughter to fix it for her so it can it can lead to that it can also lead to seeking external comfort whether it's through food relationships alcohol social media other forms of addictions seeking comfort externally to ease the internal pain the internal feelings of abandonment rejection betrayal and seeking something outside of themselves to soothe and ease this disconnect within themselves. So that's one of the root causes and leadings to addictions and this external comfort, if you will, which is always fleeting and it's always very temporary and ends up often leading down even worse roads. It can also lead to feeling overly responsible for your mother's well being. And I see this in clients, particularly when the mothers are aging. You can get away, you can go no contact for a time, for a period, but as this mother who established and laid this foundation of enmeshment with a daughter or child early on in their life, a child does eventually grow up to be an adult, but then when that mother or parent begins to age, then the feelings of overwhelm and guilt really lay on because you know that life has 100% death rate. We're all going to die at some point. 
And so when your mother or this parent who, who you were so enmeshed with in the beginning and early stages of your life begins to age and you know they're, they're coming close to their time being up, then you feel overly responsible for perhaps fixing, mending, or changing things to make up for the guilt that you've been carrying, for the burdens that you've been carrying. And then you feel guilty for establishing boundaries and prioritizing your well-being to say, I'm not available to answer your phone call every single day, three times a day. I'm not available to, to text message you back immediately because I'm working. And even if you prioritize your own well-being and you try and set internal boundaries, even external and communicate them like, look, mom, I can talk to you once a week for up to an hour. And then I've got to go. And that's the only time I have available to give you. That can lead to immense feelings of guilt and, and lead to you feeling selfish because you're prioritizing your well-being while establishing these boundaries with your mother. And we all know that boundaries are, are necessary and, and healthy. If we want to take care of ourselves and we can only take care of anyone else if we're first taking care of ourselves, right? The oxygen mask analogy. But when you've had a relationship that's established and rooted in this enmeshment with a parent or mother, then these things can occur. And then you're left with, all kinds of byproducts and issues in your life with worry, stress, anxiety. It impacts your relationships. It impacts your career. It impacts how you parent. If you have children, it just seems to impact everything because it's deeply rooted in, in this thought, this belief that it's your job, right? Because it was established so early on. So those roots have had time to go deep and, and spread far and why. So it can feel really detrimental. You may be noticing a significant impact of this in your life now. And if you have tried things to overcome this, right? Most people start about learning more about this, reading about enmeshment, learning about enmeshment, seeing the symptoms and realizing, connecting with, yes, I have those symptoms. I have those signs. I have those traits. So I'm going to go read books about it or watch a video about it and really connect with that. But that's not where it ends. Where it begins is internal and where it needs to go is internal as well. You've seen the ways you've tried to avoid it or not feel it externally and that just leads to more internal problems and, and more enmeshment, more entanglement, more knots that are tied, more feelings of feeling stuck like you can't move in your life stuck in the guilt stuck in the shame stuck in the burden stuck in the heaviness and you want to let go and release and be free from that well that's where what I have found personally and with every client that I work with the power of your mind to do that power of hypnosis the power of going internal and going inward to identify where those connections are where that enmeshment is where those knots are and then to break free from right? And people can sit there and give you advice, like your mother, you know, tried to get on and, and talk to you like a best friend. But advice given at the wrong time is often rejected, because it didn't come from you. And it oftentimes feels like you're being told what to do. And if we all know one thing, we know not a single one of us likes to be told what to do. So this modality is so much further beyond being told what to do, because often when you are that gets rejected by your mind and goes, no, that's not it. Even if it's something that could benefit you, but if it didn't come from you, then it will often feel like it doesn't work, which even deeper further furthers the root of rejection. So see how that all works. So if, if you notice or identifying that you've got enmeshment with a parent, you're a daughter and you've got enmeshment with your mother or your son who's got enmeshment with a mother or father, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter and you're stuck, you're struggling and you're suffering, but you're ready to not be stuck, not struggle, not suffer, then I would love to connect and talk more about this and, and share with you the results that other clients that I've worked with have gotten who've also experienced the same thing because it is no way to live, particularly once you identify it, to understand and know that there are powerful, fast, and effective methods out there that it doesn't take years and years and years and years talking about it to 
not feel it. So if that's what you're looking for, I would love to connect and talk to you more about how I work with clients one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so you can always find more information in the link uh, below this video. And uh, yeah, schedule time for us to connect there. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video about mother-daughter enmeshment or really parent-child enmeshment. So thank you guys. Take care.